Hello, this is Orlin. I wanted to take a moment and talk to you about the electronics that goes into the FMA Copilot 1, also known as the Copilot CPD4. Let me just say that I'm blown away. I'm blown away how well this works. It's an incredible, incredible flight stabilization system for the money. There's a bunch of higher end stuff out there, and I'm sure there's a market for it, but most people are on a budget because, let's face it, flying RC is expensive. <laughs> Anybody will tell you it's expensive. You break blades, stuff happens, uh, you bend your shafts doing, you know, crashes or what have you. I've done some stupid things and wrenched on my helicopters for hours, and I was tired of wrenching, so. I picked up a co-pilot infrared flight stabilization system and it works fantastic. Let me talk about what goes into it. It's a, a pretty simple, pretty simple device. Um, you've got your receiver over here. Let me get the webcam in there. You got a couple of dip switches behind the wires. And then you have a couple of inputs. You've got your aileron, uh, which is red, elevator, which is green, and RMT means remote, uh, which is purple. And below that, there's a little dial that says throw. That's your sensitivity control or your gain on how much uh, you want the stabilization to, to work at. You've got your dip switches too. And there's a section in the uh, user manual on dip switches and how to set those up. Typically for helicopter you want dip switch 3 off and then of course you'll have to possibly play with 1 and 2 during the calibration process and set up uh, so that uh, when you do certain things to the sensor uh, the swash plate moves accordingly. There's your swash plate. The goal here is to make sure your swash plate is level. Okay. Uh, so let me uh, just kind of explain what we got here. You've got your unit, your co-pilot unit, and the servos from the aileron and elevator plug into the co-pilot. And then the output of the co-pilot plugs into the receiver. Pretty simple to get this camera in there for you. Here's my Futaba. Okay, so basically, servos plug into the co pilot unit. The co pilot unit plugs into your receiver. Pretty simple, right? Let me grab something here for you. This is the integral part of the whole system. This is your infrared sensor. It's amazing how this thing works. I'm really surprised how well it works. And what you'll notice also is a small leveling bubble that uh, I just super glued onto the top. Picked up a line level from you know Lowe's. Just cut the plastic shell off and just glued it onto the top. It's really important when you guys are calibrating and setting up that the level bubble is level. Okay. If it's not level, your swash plate's not going to be level and you might crash. So just make sure when you're setting up that um, the sensor stays level. Okay. What you do is after you get the receiver, uh, the co pilot unit hooked up to the receiver, and then servos all wired accordingly, you're going to take your infrared sensor and put it at a 45 degree angle. Let me show you here in the front. Okay, see the, in the IR sensors? Well, there's four of them, okay, all the way around. And on a helicopter, you want to basically stick it at a 45 degree angle. This is kind of what it should look like when it's on your boom, okay, head in that direction where the sensors are kind of on the sides and out the back. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, pretty straightforward. And on the fun copter, we've got a lot of foam. So <laughs> if you're not running a custom canopy or um, 
you know, using the, the stock foam is going to take a little bit of work uh, to get it mounted, but it is pretty simple. And I'll show you guys what it looks like on a fun copter after it's mounted. But most of the RC stuff out there, like Trex and, uh, you know, uh, Honeybee and all these other you know, units out there, um, they all have pretty much a straight boom. Fun copters built differently. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, that's your electronics. Uh, the remote, by the way, you can hook up to an empty channel on your transmitter. And then, of course, turn the co-pilot on and off from the transmitter and or uh, change the gain on the transmitter. It's important you follow directions in the calibration. You want this uh, on a level field or you know some leveled area when you're calibrating. You know, the manual tells you how to do that, but uh, that's pretty well it for the electronics, co-pilot unit, receiver, and little. Let me show you the calibration button here. I'm wondering what this red button is. Well, this is your, cal your IR calibration button. And during each flight, they recommend you push that button to calibrate the helicopter. That's pretty simple. Pretty simple uh, process to do. So uh, have fun, and I'll show you guys some more info here in a little bit. I cut off the tie wraps to show you a close-up of the wiring. This seems to be the most confusing part for people is, well, now that you have these parts, where does everything go? <laughs> the manual, you know, is a manual. And who wants to read, you know, 25 pages of, of text? But um, here's what you got. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Servos, servo wires, you can see that right there. Servo wires go into the aileron and elevator inputs. See it right there? Just two in the top right. And then the output aileron elevator remote goes into the receiver, whatever you might be running. And you might have to check your manual on what channel does what if you don't remember or don't know because it's important you don't get them confused or backwards. One other thing you might want to keep in mind is which colors go where. Okay, If you look closely, you'll see the servo wires in this particular case is black, red, and yellow. Let me see if I can get that in there. Okay. Well, on the co-pilot unit, you want black pointing to the right or out, yellow on the inside. Real important you get that correct. Also get the coordination right on your receiver or generally on the Futaba receiver, blacks on the left side if the receiver is upside down. And so just match them up to your existing wires and you'll be fine. Here's the fine copter, all sealed up, electronics tucked away, everything is nice and neat. There's the sensor unit. I'll flip this around and show you. That's the bottom. Basically, the ribbon cable is tucked away inside the fuselage. It's out of the way. It looks nice and clean. What I always do is super glue Velcro to the part that it's going to be stuck to with the adhesive. There's a reason why the manual tells you not to depend on Velcro because Velcro can come off. My leveler is super glued to the sensor. The sensor is Velcroed to the second piece of Velcro and as a small insurance policy have a rubber band holding everything together. Well, this isn't going anywhere. I'll get some videos to show you guys what this looks like in flight. This is the Copilot CPD4 on a fun copter. See you in this, guys.